reference so we can use it later. Um, so welcome to Bootcamp Prep. Um, some of you may have found this course in different ways, but um, we're all here to get started here on, on uh, you know, a nice introduction to JavaScript and what you might expect at full stack. Um, so in this overview, uh, we'll just do a quick overview of the topics that we'll be covering this month. Um, so each of these days will be a different topic. Um, it will focus on a different thing. And at the end, we will just talk about next steps and how you can be best prepared for the immersive program or whatever your next step in this process is. So let's see. Um, so each day we have, we're going to have a workshop. Um, and you'll be able to find that in LearnDot. And they'll be inside the, the workshop, you'll see a pre-recorded lecture. Um, and try to try to look at that if you have some time. It's not critical that you see it before class, but it's it'll help you when we when we kind of repeat the same material in class, you'll have a better grasp of it. Um, we do require everyone to attend the, the lecture, um, which will be usually the first portion of the, the workshop, maybe the first hour or so. And we also require people will be working on the workshop with your partner. And um, we'll be talking about how that'll work in a bit. We'll be putting you in breakout rooms using Zoom. And that'll be the best way for you to work on the workshop together. And after, after class, if you, um, it is recommended if you want to review the videos from class and also check over the, there'll be solutions in LearnDot where you can see uh, different ways of looking at the problems you worked on during the class. So uh, this is really helpful. Um, there's a little, there's a button in the bottom of learn dot, this little question mark. And I'll actually stop, I'll stop here and actually show you that button. But this is, if you have questions during the workshop, find this button and click on it and submit a help, submit a help ticket. And that'll be the best way for us to reach you because there'll be a, we'll have a fellow in the class um, who will be assisting the class each day and either the instructor or the fellow can quickly uh, answer your question and or come into your breakout room and I'm going to share I'm going to show you real quick what that looks like if I can exit here so I'm going to share a different screen Okay, here we go. So I have a, a screen here with the students, the workshops for this class. This is a teacher view, but uh, what's similar, you'll see in your, in, in your view of LearnDot, you'll see this button here and you open this, you can actually submit, you can actually submit a ticket and you may have to select something here, but my view is different, but you get the basic idea. There's a way that you can communicate with us uh, when you have tickets during the workshops. And we'll go back to the other screen real quick. So um, that's that's good to know. Uh, workshops are not intended to be finished. You just do your best. And um, when you do the workshop, um, you'll be you'll be paired with a different partner each time. And so that's how that works. So also helpful, um, add your picture to learn dot. You'll see in the settings, this will help us find you uh, for the help tickets. And um, there may be some other settings there for integrating Slack, which you may wanna do so that we can um, be in better communication. Um, so a general, a general idea for uh, workshops is we're going to emphasize something called pair programming, which is uh, actually not that it's actually something you may see in when in your uh, while working in development as well. But it's it's really helpful, especially for learning new things, but also for um, helping think through problems and write things out. So you'll have someone who will be like driving, will be writing the code, and you'll have a navigator who will help plan the code and review it as it's written and have like a second pair of eyes, um, like as if you're in a car navigating and you can switch periodically or each time you finish a problem, it's usually a convenient time to switch. So um, for each workshop, we will be 
switching your partners. So it's a, it's a chance to work with different people and uh, learn different insights from different people and different styles of thinking as you go along. So I'll take us, I'll take a, just pause here for a second, see if anyone has any questions that are coming up about the material or something about full stack, which um, maybe we are going to address in a few minutes. Um, it looks like, it looks like we have another person came in the room uh, and hopefully the other three people will be here soon. So, okay, let's see, I have a question. Um, uh, yeah, so the, the PDF, um, I, it's a, I can share that with you. Um, I can, at the end of class, I'll put it in Slack uh, of a PDF of the slides we just looked at. Um, and by the way, while we're, while we're in a workshop, like, while we're in the lecture like this, an easy way to ask a question is you can either put it in the, in the chat box at the bottom of the screen, or if you just want to unmute yourself and ask the question, I can hear you. Um, that will probably be a quick way of doing that. But during the workshops, try and use that help, help desk system. So uh, let me get back to this again. So um, just some ideas about pair programming in general is that um, uh, oh so another question that just came up was the where okay so it looks like we're on top of that yeah so if you're having trouble finding that button for the help desk tickets it's in the bottom right corner it's a question mark if you just go into learn dot um, you should see it right away in the bottom right corner once you're logged in and you can click on that. Uh, so what's important, what's helpful and important about pair programming? Uh, a lot of people do, especially uh, like to practice on their own. There's something, there's something nice about that. Sometimes you can focus and just try to get clear on what, what certain principles are. However, it's super helpful to take advantage of, of working in pairs, especially in these workshops. Um, you get a chance to teach to learn which is a central aspect of full stacks uh, philosophy and what makes students at full stack so successful is the opportunity to constantly teaching other students. And that's really, from my experience, been one of the best ways I have internalized different things. Um, so um, so learning to communicate about code is just as important as actually writing it. There is a different way, a different level of understanding that comes about when you're able to actually vocalize and communicate clearly certain ideas. So also solving problems with a partner is a great way to prepare for admissions interview um, for a, a boot camp. Um, so that's if you can work with another person and, and interact with them and think through a problem, it's going to show them that you understand it. And not only do you understand it, but you can, you can work with other people on it and build an idea together. So uh, a lot of top boot camps, which you may be applying, too, and um, a lot of employers actually do use pair programming or some aspect of that kind of collaboration as part of their daily routine. So uh, just a few quick notes about myself. Um, my name is Jonathan Mann. I teach part-time with Full Stack Academy in this course and also a, uh, the immersive program, the remote immersive program, which is um, just started last month. And I work as a contract web developer uh, where I live in Sedona. Um, and that's how I fill up, fill up the rest of my, my day. And I graduated from Full Stack Academy in 2017. And that's how I connected with Full Stack initially. Um, and I, like I said, I live in Sedona. So I'm not on the East Coast. I'm actually three hours behind most of you. So um, I don't know who else is in, in my time zone. but it's probably a lot later for you guys. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna do an icebreaker now, and um, so the rules of this will be that you can just say your name, um, say where you're from, uh, why you're, why you're here, and we'll say a weird thing about you, and then you can 
you're going to be able to pick the next person. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll see who's here. So I know some of you uh, said that you don't have a working microphone or video. Um, so in that case, maybe you can try putting something in the, ch in the chat box. Um, so I'm, I'm going to, uh, I guess I'll go first, but I'll have to remember what the rules are here. So yeah, my name is Jonathan and I am live in Sedona, Arizona. It's a small town about two hours north of Phoenix. And I'm here because I'm the instructor and this is what I'm doing to help you guys. And what's a weird thing about me? Um, well, I have a twin sister. I don't think that's that weird, but it's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I really like meditation and that's not that strange, but maybe for a developer, it's less common. So I'll call that my strange thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to call on, um, Aaron, if you're okay with that. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? All right. All right. Well, my name's Aaron. Um, I actually live in a very, very small town up in Maine called Thorndike. <laughs> uh, population of about probably 30 people. Uh, internet's not so good out here. So if I'm like cutting in and out, it's because the uh, high speed internet up here is about 20 megabytes a second. So, you know, that's something to deal with, but, uh, not weird, but I've been playing for uh, four years. Um, it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm here because yeah, I'm trying to change my life. Probably like, you know, most of us here tired of uh, living paycheck to paycheck, you know, so got to make a change. So that's it. And, uh, hopefully you guys got all that. And up next I choose, we'll go with Wendy. Hi, I'm Wendy. Um, I'm from Hong Kong, but I live in New York right now. And I've been here for most of my life, actually, even though I was born in Hong Kong. And um, I'm here because um, I've always wanted to learn to code and finally had the opportunity. So I wanted to jump at the chance and take it. And um, something weird. I don't know if it's weird, but I've never lived on anything else but an island. That's me. And I will choose Allison. Hi, everybody. I'm Allison. Um, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I'm here because I've been teaching myself like front end technologies like HTML and CSS, but I keep having trouble with JavaScript. So I figure a class, more structured class would work better for me. And I guess a weird thing about me is um, directly related to John Wilkes Booth, the guy who shot Lincoln. And I pick Patrick. Oh, Patrick, I, I'm not sure if we can hear you. Which is fine. I think usually the first people who use Zoom, it takes a while for about half the people to set up their mics correctly. Um, and I make mistakes with that all the time. Um, um, still can't, let's see. You're not muted. Um, do you have a microphone, I'm sure. Let's see. Um, well, maybe we'll come back to you, Patrick, or if you want to try using the chat box, we can, we can hear you, uh, type through that if you want to. Okay. It looks like we got, as you got the video working, congratulations. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. So I guess, Patrick, if you want, uh, we'll come back to you. Um, but Let's see. Um, 
Let's see who, who else. How about uh, Sherilyn? We're doing icebreakers. I'm not sure if you just got here. I don't remember. I did just get okay, here. Okay, so we, we just... A couple of them. Okay, great. So it just, you know, say if you want to say your name, where you're from, why you're here, and a weird thing about you, that's our what we're doing. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. My name is Sherilyn. <clears throat> Uh, I live in Sarasota, Florida, but I am actually in Atlanta right now, and I decided to go for coding because um, I work in disaster response, and the big move with climate crisis, my goal is to take natural hazards data and turn that into something useful for government, and way government is completely behind. Um, uh, so there's a big gap in the emergency management and disaster fields where I feel like um, you know, if not me, then who? So that's why I'm here. And something weird about me, uh, I could be here all day. Um, I have a very photogenic, super friendly chihuahua, and I make a really, really good pound cake. Weird and delicious. So, yes, pound cake is great. Do um, you want to pick someone else? Um, I don't know who hasn't already gone. Um, everybody looks very friendly, so let's see. Um, Daniela? I don't know who's gone, so if I... You're good. I haven't gone yet. <laughs> okay, great. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Daniela. Um, I live in New York, so I'm from the East Coast. Um, I guess I'll start with a weird thing about me and that'll get us to why I got into coding. So I don't know if this is weird, but um, I am afraid of clowns. So if somebody were to invite me to go watch it, I would not go watch it. I've been terrified of clowns ever since I was like probably four years old and my mom even dressed me in a Halloween costume as a clown. I started crying. <laughs> um, so I actually got into coding because, so right now I work as a uh, customer experience data um, analyst and I, I really like what I do. Um, I have a bachelor's in finance, crazy, because that's not what I want to do, right? Um, but I honestly, I didn't like uh, doing finance. And what I do now, I kind of want to take it to the next level. So, you know, everything data analytics, but what's more to it on the back end, right? So I feel like with coding, um, I've, I had exposure to it, very minimal, and I actually enjoyed it. So I'm like, hey, let me, let me go ahead and probably make this a career change for me. Um, and currently what I'm doing on the side too, I actually, I'm doing a Salesforce training course as well, um, for Apex. So they actually use, so Apex is the coding language for Salesforce and I actually enjoy it. So I'm like, Hey, let me go ahead and do uh, JavaScript as well with full stack. And I've heard about full, and I heard about full stack from a for a former full stack alum. So she's like, definitely do it. So I'm here. Nice to meet everyone. Great, welcome. Um, and I pick Carva. Uh, Hi everyone, my name is Karma. I am from Nepal, but I live in New York City. And I want to code because I want to be a developer um, in the future. <laughs> and one weird thing about me is I love watching Bollywood movies. And I choose Matthew. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm actually your fellow for uh, today. So if you have any questions, I'll be talking to you later during the workshop. Um, I just went to Full Stack and I am living in New York City right now, originally from Baltimore. Um, and yeah, welcome everybody. I look forward to getting to know you all. And I choose uh, Tess. Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Tesfai. Uh, I'm from Ethiopia originally, but I live in uh, uh, Washington DC area. And and I came to the, um, you know, I'm just attending uh, coding camp because, you know, I need to change my life because I'm tired of, you know, living with paycheck to paycheck. In the meantime, I'm attending the course right now, uh, you know, from the workplace because I don't have time just, you know, to get 
off. Uh, here I am. Great, welcome. Oh. And the next one, uh, I'm invite Car 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 Clarissa. Clar Clarissa. Clarissa? Clarissa, yeah. I'm sure that I butchered that name. Um, I'm not sure if, um, okay, she can't get her audio working. That's fine. So her microphone. Um, did you try unmuting yourself? There's a mute button in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Um, that may be part of the problem. If it's not, then that's fine. Um, we can either get back to you later or if you want to share a few notes in the chat box, we can read them. Okay, good. We got some tech support here. Um, let's see. Um, now, do you have a, do you have a microphone that you've tried to use before that you know works? Um, so a few things that I normally get tripped up on, like at the beginning of class today, I had my headset turned on, and I tried talking, and I didn't. Oh, it's actually turned on. Um, oh, yeah, so sometimes you'll have something plugged in that could be uh, keeping you from uh, hearing or from speaking the way that you would normally do that. Um, but we can get back to you. Um, how about let's pick someone else? Uh, how about Lauren? Are you there? Hi, so I'm Lauren. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, okay, so I'm originally from Orlando, Florida, but I am living in uh, Virginia now. Um, I've been, um, well, in 2017, I was in the hospital for two months, and I lost my call button for the nurse. Um, so I decided, well, since I'm stuck in the hospital and then stuck in rehab, I figured I'd learn how to code, so that's what I did. Um, so I've been pretty much teaching myself for the past two years. Um, in the past two years, I've spent like six months either in the hospital or in nursing and rehab facilities. So yeah, so it's just cool. I'm enjoying it. It's giving me some freedom and ability to do things when I might not physically be able to do things. So that's why I'm here and I'm really excited to hang out with all you. And I think I answered all the questions, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, you oh, yeah, let, um, yeah, let me pick, let sure. me pick someone. Sure. I'm going with SG over there with all the monitors. Uh, uh, Lauren, Lauren, maybe I could ask you a quick question. Um, you said you've been in, so you've been in the hospital. Is that part of your interest in uh, developing? Is it something that you think you could uh, more easily do for work because of your situation or? Yeah, well, um, yeah, so uh, I think it will afford me the ability to like uh, have more freedom and the hours that I work, where I work, and those types of things. Previously, sure. I worked in, in specialty pharmacy for about 10 years. So um, I kind of got started uh, working on a program to go ahead and pretty much automate uh, everything that I know how to do to make it easier for people to actually do my job or my old job. Um, so I'm kind of looking to like up my skills to finish that project and have the confidence to go and pitch that. Okay, awesome. Uh, I'm sorry, you picked someone. Um, yeah, I'm going with SG. Okay, SG. Can, it, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, I got that working. No, uh, I'm in Silicon Valley. Um, we can't see you though. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Is that, is that yeah. better? Is that I can better? see your hand. Can you it's hear not, me? Uh, we can hear you, but we're, we're seeing your hand from the left side. Yeah, well, the problem is, the camera's way down here somewhere in the corner. I figured so, that. Um, yeah, yeah we can't see you. I mean, if, if it's not possible today, that's fine. But I just wanted to let you know that the camera we're seeing you from is the side of your computer screen. Okay. We're seeing your mouse and your keyboard. Yeah, I'll get that. Okay, we'll figure it out later. But I uh, know I'm Silicon Valley. Um, I'm glad that they're offering this. This. Uh, oh, actually, this is the boot camp. Well, I, I learned about full stack is what I was searching for. Uh, uh, structured training 
planning out here is really expensive. The boot camps out here are really, you know, 18 to 25 some thousand dollars uh, for four to six months. And so full stack, what I liked about them was they offered a lot of free resources like the boot camp preps online and this stuff, either at discounts or pretty inexpensive. And I thought that was really nice. And, um, I went through one last year, but I wasn't able to uh, join the uh, remote because they stopped that. They no longer did remote anymore. And uh, so I'm really excited about this boot camp. And then there's a school over here in Cal Poly that's offering basically your same uh, program. I think it's pretty much just full stack and they're just uh, offering it. Uh, so that's pretty much my situation right now. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'm actually, um, I'm, the, I'm the assistant teacher for that class. So oh, there is a remote. Yeah, so there's a there's a remote. I actually took um, there was a remote program with Full Stack Academy about two years ago, which they didn't continue that program, but they're just starting it up again, and they're doing it with Cal Poly this time. So uh, there is a remote program, just so all of you know that you could enroll in and do Full Stack Academy online in that similar format to this, and it's on Pacific time. One, so, I'm oh, sorry. One thing that seems really fortunate. At least the emails I've been getting. If you're in, if you're in either Chicago, I forgot what they call that one. Grace Hopper is that one. Yeah. And there's another one in um, New York. Sounds like New York is paying for everybody. It's just pretty much free. They got a bunch of money because I got, I got emails saying, hey, you can, you can join for free. But, but I basically, I'm not a New York a resident, so I, I mean, I saw, heard someone said a couple of people. I think said they're from New York, so you may want to look into that. Yeah, they may have some scholarships for some students. I don't know if it's for everyone, but they, they do sometimes have scholarships like that. Um. But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. mute that because that's pretty. Yeah, see, I mean, if you look at that, that's crazy, you know, it's right down here in the bottom. So, sure, I understand. So, who else do we have here? Um, let's go with um, Yanis Bell. Are you there? Maybe she doesn't have her. Uh, oh. Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Let me put the video. Hi. <laughs> so, well, I'm here because I'm taking a career break for taking care of my two kids. So, I'm QA. Well, I was QA. Now I'm looking to re entry to the workforce. So, I'm taking this course for improving the tech skill. So, I think that's all. Let me choose mm. Santana, Aaron Santana, it could be. That's perfect, but I actually already went. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my bad. So, <laughs> Sherry. Let's see. Hi, everyone. I think that was me. So I think Allison, maybe Allison, some help. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Um, I've been too. It's like that memory game where you have to flip the cards over. So I think the only one who hasn't gone was Gavin. Gavin. And so young. <laughs> and I haven't gone either. Sorry, Gabby. <laughs> uh, Hmm. Who did you pick? I didn't hear. Uh, yeah. Oh, Gavin. Gavin, go ahead. Oh, I, I think we can't hear you now. Um, now you're muted again. Let me. So. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but um, I think we just had someone else join, right? Did Matthew go? Suyan hasn't gone. Suyan, okay. I know Gavin was trying to speak a second ago, but we can't. We'll let him. If, just yeah, just keep keep working on that, and we'll get back to you. Um, sure. Okay. Well, we can go. We can come back. Um, we can get back to this in a second. Um, if someone. It was, I think I, I remember, I thought I just heard your voice a second ago, though, Gavin. So was it, um, maybe was there a, hmm. Oh, Suyang, are you able to go now? 
Yeah, I can. Okay, great. Hi, um, I'm, I go by so, it's easier than so young. Um, I'm from Idaho, Boise, Idaho, and um, weird thing about me, although I live in Idaho, famous for potatoes, I don't eat potatoes currently, so that's kind of weird, I would say. Um, and why I'm here, um, I recently introduced to coding um, by my husband, and I didn't see myself doing this for my, as my career at that time, but the more I looked into it, the more interesting it was, and um, intrigued my interest, so here I am. All right, awesome. Um, I do think, um, looks like Gavin is still working on this, but I do know that we will, there may be one or two other people who will come back who will be joining us late, which is fine. I know there may have been some confusion on the time zone or the time it starts, but um, we are in Eastern, uh, the times that they send out are on Eastern Standard Time, so um, this will be the time we start each day. Um, how's it looking, Gavin? No? Okay, we'll continue and uh, we can definitely, anyone wants to share later, we can get back to that. So let me go back to the slides here. Great, so we, we did our slide. Um, so there'll be two projects that which we'll get to work on um, during the course, which are optional projects. And it's really just a good opportunity to start using what you've been learning to build um, larger programs. And I highly recommend anything, anytime you learn something new, to just type, to write it out, type it out as much as you can, especially if you can um, literally take a piece of paper and write it with your hand. That's one of the best ways to learn. I think there's even been research done on how the way that you use your fingers to learn something is actually can be very, uh, can be more helpful than other ways of typing things. So um, it's just a really good practice and you can, vi you can visually see your code on paper. It's, it's really good. So I'd recommend doing that or typing things out and practice applying everything you learn in some unique way. Um, so we do have also practice assessments. So this will be something which we do after we finish, you finish this course. There'll be a, uh, a risk-free assessment, um, which is just for practice. And then you'll have a, a second one available, which will be a, a test that if you do well on it, it could be used as a replacement for your actual admissions exam for Full Stack Academy. And if you don't do well on that one, it's not going to necessarily hurt you in any way. So that is something to think about is, to be, is that you can use this course to actually prepare for what could be like an admissions exam for full stack. And if you do well in it, then that will be your entryway into the immersive program. One of the immersive programs, either the, the actual ones in New York and Chicago, the, the live ones, or something like what we're doing with the, the remote program through Cal Poly. So, um, we're just going to go over a few, just some values and things, principles that we're going to try to embody during this course to make, help us learn better and things run more smoothly. So, um, some of this seems obvious, but it's always good to just take a moment to pay attention to it. Um, and in particular, it's, I think it's helpful because a lot of developers do sometimes have a stigma of being people who are um, um, people who don't always have great people skills and we're here to break that stigma. There's actually a lot of potential. If you have a good mind for coding, but you also have a good sense of values and a uh, strong ability to work with other people, then that's actually really, really helpful uh, when looking for jobs and also in succeeding with your jobs as a developer um, or, or just in your bootcamp program, you're going to do much better if you can work well with people and um, you can learn to integrate that those, those coding skills with people skills. And that's really, really valuable in the workforce these days. It's not a lot of people really can have that kind of balance. Um, so be patient uh, with yourself and others. Um, it's a good, if something is difficult, for another person, it's an opportunity for you to practice. You can practice teaching it better and seeing how well you can teach it and really get clear what, what, what are they missing or what do they not understand or what 
And that's, that by itself is a valuable way of thinking. It's a very valuable way of thinking for troubleshooting and for um, helping a team or other people in your job or your school like really succeed. Um, always ask questions, even ones that seem dumb. You'll be surprised at how many people have the same question. And even really simple questions can be um, opportunities for um, bringing up concepts which may have been missed or not explained very well. Um, for us, the process, be on time, just, you know, we'll, um, you know, help others, teach others, et cetera. So anything along these lines, and of course, having fun, it's really important. And for a few more notes on values, uh, just be mindful of all these things here. Of course, this is, again, pretty obvious to most people, but just try and be professional and leave out all of these Sometimes even jokes can be offensive to some people and we'd rather just focus on learning and absorbing as much information as we can. So, you know, just if in doubt, just leave it out. And, you know, there are other places to have, to, to push the, the boundaries on what's acceptable in a classroom or something. I mean, that can be fun sometimes, but it's not where we're gonna be, say, permitting or um, encouraging in this classroom. So. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so some other things to keep in mind to keep your camera on. And um, I didn't, let's see. So there's a few notes in here. I didn't write some of these notes. So please excuse if they seem kind of silly, but uh, yeah, keep your camera on. And um, so if there's some technical issues or whatever we can we can sort that out but the camera is a really good way to make sure that we're all connecting and present with each other and um so you know keep your mic on uh, mic off during try to keep it off during lectures or when other people are talking but of course turn it on if you have a question um you know just dress appropriately be enthusiastic and uh make sure that we're all inside of Zoom and um, especially for our breakout rooms. Um, just make sure we try to keep your Zoom application open as much as possible because it'll help us with our pairing and all that stuff. So we're gonna, uh, I'm just gonna stop here and ask again if anyone has any questions or let's see, oh, I'm gonna see here, I can see everyone again and it uh, looks like we have a couple people that joined us. Um, Chloe just joined us. Chloe, we did some we did some uh, icebreakers before, and we we were, we were talking about the class, giving an overview and everything. Um, are you able to? Do you have a or do you have a video, or is your microphone working at the moment? So maybe uh, okay. So we'll get back to you later, but. Um, some people did have some trouble with their microphones, of course, the first day. It's, we're still learning how to use Zoom here. But um, maybe if, you, if you're able to turn your microphone on later, just let me know and we can let you do a quick icebreaker and just introduce yourself to the class. Um, I know some other people also are, don't have, have webcams or they're not set up yet. So again, we'll just get back to that later and, um, and uh, see who else joins us. So uh, why JavaScript? So a lot of you um, probably were attracted to JavaScript because there's a lot of hype around it right now. And a lot of the modern frameworks are based in JavaScript. Um, as you can see, it's actually the most popular language in the world. And that's not just for modern applications, but for uh, websites and web applications and software in general. Um, you'll see though HTML, CSS, and SQL. The next three on the list are also part of our um, curriculum for full stack in general, because those again are the most widely needed and used languages for the internet. Um, now, uh, let's see. Something to note about JavaScript, something else is that it's not, it's used in many different ways. So a lot of common websites, they may not even necessarily seem to be based with JavaScript, like any other major framework is going to in some way involve JavaScript because JavaScript is really the language of the browser. It was developed, as we're going to see in a second, it was developed for 
the browser and um, it's what gives the browser ability to run code in a dynamic way um, on your computer. So it's not running on a server somewhere necessarily, but uh, front-end JavaScript will be running right on your computer. And so that's one of the things that has made it uh, very useful when it comes to the internet. So um, why is JavaScript so popular? So it's, it does power the majority of web applications in different ways. And there was a, a kind of a funny thing that it's called Atwood's law that anything that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. And I think that came from the insight that because JavaScript was built into the browser and it was taking advantage of the browser and the person's computer, there was this idea that eventually that uh, paradigm would kind of take over and JavaScript would become super, dom would dominate everything. Um, it is runs anywhere on the, on the stack, web browsers and servers. Uh, it started being used on the server uh, with the introduction of Node a number of years ago. Um, originally, it was almost like an experiment. How, could we take JavaScript and let it run on a server, not just in the browser? And it turned out to be a very successful experiment. And one of the benefits of that is really that um, if you know JavaScript, um, and you can use it on the front end and the back end on the through the browser and the front end of a website or software and also on a server where a lot of um, data is being stored and in, in, in processed or you know APIs and all that is happening it's really helpful because then you don't have to learn multiple languages and then constantly switch between them um, it just so it became kind of a practical thing and that the idea that you could use JavaScript on both sides of the stack made it really popular and the first seven um, uh, yeah uh, seven tens of JavaScript is relatively I think we what we mean there is that most of the, the more basic aspects of JavaScript are very easy to learn so that's another reason why it became um, I, so uh, someone did ask about that I'm actually I that's one of the notes I did not write here and I don't know what seven tens means so I'll have to look that up and get back to you um, I think I'm guessing what it means were the first, the, the, the more basic parts of JavaScript are relatively learner friendly. So if you are starting with a language, JavaScript is one of those languages where you can just start writing code and it's pretty simple to get started. Um, ES5, ES Next, um, there's later versions of JavaScript, which you'll hear about. Um, ES6 is one of the famous ones, and those were uh, those were later versions of JavaScript that introduced uh, more advanced features, which made it um, more competitive with other modern languages. And this function versus um, uh, arrow thing is just something we'll have. We'll, I won't bother explaining it now, but it's a different way of writing code in, in different scenarios that have made it more popular. Uh, JavaScript is backward compatible and it's kind of funny um, if you can think what would happen if JavaScript was not backward compatible and you think about how much of the internet from 20 years ago is written in early versions of JavaScript that if JavaScript was not backward compatible and then they introduced a new version of JavaScript you might break like half the internet. So that's actually something that came up as a real, there's actually one um, JavaScript was written about um, 20, uh, was it 25, maybe 25 years ago, um, 20, 25 years ago. And when it was written, there was actually, there is a specific, um, uh, let's say glitch that, that is a known thing that was written into JavaScript. And the reason they never changed that one thing was they knew that it would, it might, essentially break the internet. So it's kind of a funny thing, but it's a real thing that when you, if you're working with the language, it's good to know if it's backwards compatible or not. Uh, we teach ES next, which means the latest, whatever the latest uh, iteration of JavaScript is, we believe in focusing on that because that's what has the, the most relevant and, and most modern features. And that's what employers and or other boot camps are going to be teaching and learning and wanting you to know because that's what's most useful. So 
we are going to not going to be focusing on those the newer features too much, but just some of them, um, just because some of these newer features do require more more knowledge to understand. But they will be part of. We definitely won't be teaching outdated um, aspects of JavaScript. So to get the most from this course, um, there's going to be pre-work for each workshop that you uh, that we attend. And if you can work on that the day before, the afternoon before, just to read through it at least, that's great. If you also have time to look at the video, that's helpful. But we will be um, going over the same material from the video in class. Uh, but it's good to see it twice if you can. Um, so productive struggle. So it's going to be, especially as you get, if you, um, if and when you go into a full-time, uh, more of an immersive program at a boot camp. Um, it's going to be a chance to really struggle with something and push yourself to be productive and see how you can, how much you can learn and how much you can um, integrate in a short period of time. So that's something to maybe from the beginning to start like taking on, like having that intention of taking on that challenge and and, and making it something that you really enjoy. So again. Um, always ask for help when you need it. Um, there is no wrong questions here, and um, it's that's what we're here for. There will be a fellow in the class who can help. Um, I'm here to answer questions as well. And outside of class, if you have questions, feel free to Slack them to the group um, or to us. And time permitting, we'll try to answer them. But um, primarily, the best time to ask questions will be in class. So. Um, We'll have solutions at the end of each class. We'll open up solutions for problems which you may have done during class, but at least try to work on the problems first. That way, when you see the solution, it will make more sense and you'll get more out of it. And also go back to unfinished workshops because everything will add on its, the previous workshops and you'll be more prepared for a, uh, any testing you do later on. And the solution videos, again, are a great way to review everything and to really internalize what we're doing. So um, the main topic for um, today's for the today's workshop, we're actually going to have some get started here with some uh, some actual material. It's, it's called tidy code tips. So we're just going to be talking about how to best um, organize and write clean code and um, why that's important. So. I'll just take another quick break here and see um, see the classroom and see if we have any any questions coming up you may have missed. Uh, looks like you no know, questions here. If anyone who had some trouble with their mic or video before wanted to try to introduce themselves, that's great. If not, we'll just continue. Um, or feel free to ask any questions that you have about the course. I think. Um, I'm not sure if we just had someone join us. Okay, no, that's just, that's T. Great. Okay, so we'll continue. So let's see. Okay, so why write tidy code? So writing tidy code is almost, is a little bit like writing, um, it's like being a good writer and writing a, a you know, an, an essay that is well organized and easy to read and not too, not too verbose. So it's actually not just a, um, I uh, just got a note from someone that they can't hear. There's no audio. Let me just check and make sure. Okay. Okay, so everyone else can hear. Um, let me just see here.
Um, so, T, are you able to, were you able to hear us before? Yeah, so Aaron had some good, uh, good advice if anyone's having some issues with their, uh, their speakers or hearing Zoom. Um, there's a few places to control what you're hearing. If you have, a, if, um, depending on if you have a Mac or a Windows machine, but your computer settings will be one place to look. You can also look in the Zoom settings to make sure that uh, in the preferences there may be a place for you to uh, adjust that. Yeah. Um, well, in any case, uh, this will be recorded. So if anyone is not able to hear, we can, I'll send it out later. Um, so let me just let him know that. So um, we'll, we'll continue for now and hopefully, um, so I think this will be difficult to help uh, certain people without seeing their, um, yeah, so uh, it will be something that we'll, I can, I'll be posting in Slack. Um, and so that's something which right after class, I should be able to post it each day and um, then you can watch it as much as you want to. So that will be helpful. Um, if anyone has some of the ideas about um, okay, so we'll get back to that. We can I think after this we'll also do some more uh, have a chance to um, help people troubleshoot their computers here. But back to writing tidy code. So it, it's just like writing anything um, you write in school or for an essay or for a paper. Um, it's not just about being clean and looking, uh, looking tidy. It's actually a way of thinking. And if you write clean code, it's going to help you learn to think more cleanly. And it's going to help, practically, it's going to help you read your own code and debug your code. Um, because, like we say here, engineers spend more time, a lot more time reading and debugging code than actually writing it. And that's actually can be quite true. And it does... Um, show a sense of professionalism, uh, attention to detail and pride in work. If you can take pride in writing code, which is really clean and organized, it's actually um, becomes a style of the way that you write code is really powerful. And um, you'll see things and see ways of organizing code that will um, help you uh, stay organized, especially as you get into more complex uh, programs and things. You want things to be really clean. So here's some quick notes on what that might look like. So when we're indenting things, um, so we'll talk about indentation in a second, but that means usually it's two spaces or four spaces or a tab space. And that's when you push things over, you in, you, you're gonna do an indent as we'll show you here. So we have an indent. Um, now these two green lines, these two forward slashes are used for comments. So whenever you write, want to write a note in your code, you generally, in at least in JavaScript, it's different with other languages or CSS, for example, or HTML. But in JavaScript, if you put two forward slashes, you can write a note after it, and the compiler or JavaScript won't, uh, not compiler with JavaScript, but with um, other languages, uh, it's not going to think it's part of your code. So that's what that does. We also see that there's a couple spaces here. And whenever you inside of a, a curly braces, which is a way of describing a block of code, um, you'll see the curly brace starts on line four, and there's a closing one on line nine, which is the opposite direction. Anything inside of that is going to need one level of indentation. But then if you look on line seven, there's another set of, um, of there's an, there, there's another, another set of curly brackets, and we do indentation inside of that. So I, 
there's actually the closing brackets for the main block is on line four and line 11. And then on line six and nine, we have another set of curly brackets inside that. And we have indentation on line seven and eight for further indentation. So we have, um, this is probably will make sense to you. You've probably seen things like this with like, um, if you have a, uh, like an, a list and like a, a, like a Word document or something where you have numbers and letters and you have different indentation, it's the same idea. And the way that we often um, will show where the indentation happens is, is inside of the curly brackets. And the curly brackets are holding uh, some piece of code. And just to give you a sense of what's happening here, so we have this function that we're calling amazing function. And the function keyword, which you see on line four, is just a way of saying that we're about to name a function. Um, you can ignore these parentheses for now that you see at the end of line four, but that's part of how the function works. And um, then when you have a function, that is something that one of the things that we're going to be using, which holds a piece of code, and that holds all the code from line five to 10, including the comments. But on line 14 is where we actually get to execute the function. So we have a definition of a function here. It's just defining it, saying what's gonna happen if we decide to run this function. But we don't actually run the function until line 14. And if you see the top right corner, the, the only thing this function actually does is it prints out this text, this function is amazing. And if you look on line eight, there's actually a thing called console.log, which is actually making that happen. So when you name variables, uh, this is the standard protocol for naming variables in JavaScript, norm, normal variables. Uh, it's called camel case. And it's where you start with a lowercase. The first, if you have a variable which has three or four, or any, well, any, num any multiple number of words in it, um, we, have, we can't use spaces and, because then it would think it's multiple things. We can't do that. We have to use one, um, one block here. But the, the standard way of doing this um, is to, the first word is lowercase and then all successive words are uppercase. Uh, you'll see other languages or other styles uh, sometimes have underscores and things like that. And that's good to avoid that. Um, in JavaScript, we have, like we're saying, there are, there are standards, and if someone sees you doing something strange or different, uh, it may not mean your code's bad, but they're, gonna, they're going to assume that you're either a beginner or someone who does, uh, who's trying to be really different. And um, it's better not to, it's better to, it, it's better to not, it, it's better to stick with the conventions because it's going to help people read your code better. It's going to help people uh, focus on the quality of your code and not maybe making assumptions about your skill level. Um, it's just good things to learn. And there's a lot of uh, standard things which we'll be going over. So don't use ambiguous variable names. So X, for a lot of practices and things we'll be doing, we may be sometimes using ambiguous variable names, but in a real situation, it's much better to, it's right now, it's much better to get into a habit of actually naming things for what they mean. X is a very generic, uh, a very common and generic variable name used a lot for practice, but in a real situation, it's best to name variables for something more, as something more meaningful. So for example, if it were, if we have a program which is dealing with temperatures, we might say current temp equals 68 and not just X. But it, it is common still to use short variable names as counters. So sometimes where there's something that truly is generic, we'll use something like I. I could actually stand for index, short for index. In this case, we are using an index to go through a loop and actually just keep track of where we are in the loop. So that's okay because it's really, it, it would be, um, it would be very, not helpful to try and name what that index is here in this case. It's just a simple way of counting something. So we will use something like I for index or something like that. So this loop just goes through and it counts three numbers. So um, 
that was the end of those slides. It looks like in the meantime, we did have a couple people um, join us or got their cameras working, which is great. Um, so I'll just do a, just to briefly review. My name is Jonathan, and I am one of the instructors for this class. Um, the other instructor you'll meet tomorrow, and um, he'll will be alternating classes each day. And I think Matthew is here. He's the fellow, and he'll be um, he'll be answering questions and helping with the class during the workshop. And um, if anyone has any questions about things that we may have missed, I can go over with you later. But we, we are going to have a chance to do today, which is going to be fun, is we're going to have uh, a short workshop. And it will give us a chance to practice going through LearnDot and seeing how things work. Um, and uh, before we do that, Chloe, are, is, is your microphone working? No? Not sure? Um, let me unmute. There's a mute button. Um, if you see on the bottom left hand corner, you're currently muted. Oh, there you are. Uh, uh, can you try speaking again? Hello. Hi, we can hear you now. Hi. So um, if you just wanted to say a few words by yourself, where you're from, what brought you to this course, and um, something weird about you. Okay. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, I've been coding on my own for like six months, but I really want to like get more into it. So I'm trying to take courses, jumpstart. And something weird. I don't know. I hate ketchup. I guess weird. that's weird. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, we, we had some other weird stuff here. We have someone who's only lived on islands. Um, we have someone who lives in Idaho but doesn't like potatoes. It's pretty close. It's pretty <laughs> close. And you don't like ketchup. So uh, good luck buying french fries with that person. <laughs> You'll have trouble. I um, have a note here. OK, so yeah. so. Um, Great. Um, so let me also open up. If everyone wants to um, actually pull up and open Learn Dot on your computer, uh, we can walk through this together, how the workshops are going to be working. And I'll try and pull it up on my screen, too, and show you at the same time. OK, so um, actually, if you're actually in LearnDot, if you would actually reload your screen as well, just because I just opened the workshop, and you may have to refresh your browser so that you can see the workshop now. And uh, normally, you'll be able to see the workshop um, if you go to the uh, workshop. Um, and you'll see uh, something called uh, Bootcamp Prep, Introduction and Tidy Code. If you click on that, you'll then see a few different sections, pre-reading, pre-recorded lecture, workshop. And um, when the solutions are open as well, you may see something called solutions. Now, usually the pre-reading will be open before class. It wasn't open today, um, but normally it'll be open before, and you can take a look at it and prepare for class. And um, is anyone not able to see this currently? You can just raise your hand or uh, let me know. Wendy, um, what are you able to see? Were you able to find, are you able to get to the learn.full uh, learn stack academy page? Uh, 